Hello, my name is Anna Dolner, and today we will be discussing the diagnosis and treatment of acute otitis media. After listening to this presentation, you should be able to name the symptoms of acute otitis media, make the diagnosis of acute otitis media based on clinical exam findings, and understand how to treat acute otitis media. We will discuss the epidemiology, pathophysiology, microbiology, signs and symptoms, and treatment of acute otitis media. Acute otitis media occurs most commonly among children ages 6 to 18 months. Over half of children will be diagnosed with AOM by age 1, and up to 90% will have had at least one episode by age 3. Acute otitis is the most common reason antibiotics are prescribed to children in the U.S. One study performed in 2000 showed that uh, acute otitis media was responsible for 16 million office visits and almost 13 million antibiotic prescriptions that year. Risk factors for AOM include daycare attendance, tobacco smoke exposure, and family history. Members of indigenous tribes and children who are not breastfed as infants are also at increased risk of developing acute otitis media. Acute otitis media is defined by the presence of fluid in the inner ear with signs of middle ear inflammation, as well as signs of systemic illness. In a typical case of acute otitis media, a child colonized with pathogenic bacteria develops a URI, which leads to inflammation of the eustachian tubes obstructing the isthmus. Because of this obstruction, secretions accumulate leading to bacterial migration and subsequent growth. This results in acute otitis media. This is a diagram of the ear. As mentioned on the previous slide, inflammation of the eustachian tube, which is labeled as number 12, leads to obstruction of the isthmus and fluid accumulation within the middle ear that is subsequently infected by bacteria. This can be visualized on exam as fluid behind the tympanic membrane, which is labeled as number four. There are three bacteria that are responsible for the majority of cases of AOM in children, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Moraxella catarralis, and non-typable Haemophilus influenzae. Note that acute otitis media can be the result of a polymicrobial infection and that the percentages listed on the slide represent the percentage of children from whom a particular bacteria is isolated, not the percentage of episodes of AOM that are due primarily to that particular bacteria. It is important to consider the most likely causative agent when treating AOM as it affects antibiotic selection. Note that almost all strains of non-typable H. flu and 50% of strains of Moraxella catarralis are beta-lactamase positive. Also, half of strep pneumo strains are resistant to penicillin due to the presence of penicillin binding proteins. Please also note that there are multiple viral causes of AOM, but as there are no treatments available for these, they will not be covered in this talk. The signs and symptoms of acute otitis media include fever, otalgia, odorrhea, and irritability. Fever is present in about half of patients, but is rarely higher than 40 degrees Celsius, and otalgia is present in about three quarters of patients. Many patients have concurrent or antecedent URI symptoms. Other nonspecific symptoms such as headache, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea can be present as well. The physical exam finding most suggestive of AOM is the presence of a middle ear effusion with bulging of the tympanic membrane. Other exam findings seen in patients with acute otitis media include reduced mobility of the TM on insufflation, an erythematous or cloudy TM, bole on the TM, pus behind the TM, or perforation of the TM. This slide shows a normal TM on the left, 
and the TM of a patient with AOM on the right. Note the translucent, pearly white, flat TM with good light reflex in the photograph of the normal TM. Note the erythema, slight dullness, bulging TM, and purulence visible behind the TM in the patient with AOM. Arguably the most important treatment for AOM in most children is symptomatic treatment. The fever can be treated with ibuprofen or acetaminophen. The atalgia can be treated with either of these or with topical antipyrene benzocaine drops. Not every child with clear or suspected acute otitis media based on their clinical presentation and physical exam needs to be immediately treated with antibiotics. However, if a child is less than six months old and the diagnosis is certain or suspected, if they are six to 24 months and the diagnosis is certain, or if they are felt to be systemically ill by the physician, they should be immediately treated with antibiotics. Another option in children is delayed antimicrobial therapy, in which symptomatic treatment alone is attempted for 48 to 72 hours. If that fails, the child is started on antibiotics. The reason this strategy is used is that many children will recover from AOM without antibiotics, regardless of whether the infection is viral or bacterial. However, this strategy should only be attempted in two patient populations. The first is otherwise healthy patients who are 24 months of age or older and have an uncertain clinical diagnosis or have only mild to moderate illness with a certain clinical diagnosis. The second group is patients who are 6 to 24 months of age who have only mild or moderate illness and an uncertain diagnosis. The preferred treatment for acute otitis media is high-dose amoxicillin. It should be administered at a dose of 80 to 90 milligrams per kilogram per day in order to overcome penicillin binding proteins. Amoxicillin clavulanate can also be considered for first-line therapy if the patient appears severely ill or if infection with a beta-lactamase producing organism is suspected. It should also be prescribed based on a dosage of 80 to 90 milligrams per kilogram per day of the amoxicillin component. Other antibiotic choices may need to be considered in certain situations. For patients with a mild penicillin allergy, a second or third generation cephalosporin, such as ceftonir, is recommended. If the patient has a severe penicillin allergy, such as anaphylaxis, clindamycin or a macrolide antibiotic such as azithromycin can be used. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole can also be used, but this is less preferred. The standard duration of antibiotic therapy for acute otitis media is 10 days. Azithromycin is only given for five days, but its effects last for 10 days. It is reasonable to consider a shorter course in children who are greater than six years of age with mild or moderate AOM. Antibiotic failure can occur in patients with acute otitis media. If a patient's symptoms fail to resolve in 48 to 72 hours, you should suspect that the patient is infected with an organism that is resistant to the antibiotic you prescribed. The resistance is generally due to beta-lactamase production. Thus, it is recommended that the patients be switched to amoxicillin clavulanate or one of the aforementioned cephalosporins if they were initially on amoxicillin. In summary, acute otitis media occurs most commonly in children aged 6 to 18 months. Patients commonly present with fever, otalgia, otorrhea, and a concomitant or antecedent URI. They tend to have an erythematous bulging TM on exam, and purulence may be present behind the TM. Treatment with antibiotics can be delayed in lower risk groups, such as well-appearing children with an uncertain diagnosis who are 6 to 24 months old, and otherwise healthy children who are greater than 24 months old. 
When antibiotics are prescribed, they should target strep pneumo, Moraxella catarralis, untypable H flu. The severity of a patient's illness and their risk of infection with a resistant organism should also be considered when selecting an antibiotic. Common choices include amoxicillin, amoxicillin clavulanate, a second or third generation cephalosporin, or a macrolide. Thank you.